759. Things look like they're up and going. That's a good sign. Just got minor. Like, I erased a bunch of stuff last night. Because I did. And, uh, so the little eraser crumbs are everywhere. So I'm just brushing this out of the way. There's a bunch of finger smudges everywhere. I don't think you can see them, but they're driving me crazy. Oh, hey, mo caps. So yesterday we worked on Gosetsu's what right shoulders. Now I'm going to be working on his left. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, I am doing Gosetsu Everfall from Final Fantasy Online 14 for Yumicon this year. Again, plans did not work in my favor to do two Final Fantasy XIV costumes, so we're just doing one. Um, so we're going to do some gender bending. So I've got a bunch of reference images here that I'm using. His left shoulder is different than his right, so this is his left like he was turned around facing this would be the left shoulder does come down a little bit more than his right so that is what I'm working on what I did do I'm not sure if you can see that there is a light outline of where his armor is going to be I did uh, last night I want to try something I took tissue paper not tissue paper forgive me tracing paper and I laid the tracing paper out on my sketch. I took just my regular, um, what is this, 0 0.7 millimeter pencil from Papermate, nothing fancy. Um, I drew over all the lines, then flipped it and took the end of my eraser here, since it's plastic, and I rubbed across the back side of the tracing paper, almost like I was using carbon paper, and it laid a light very light faint outline because again it is identical from one side to another <coughs> so I can make the small corrections and right here as it comes down to over his chest <coughs> pardon me I love the pray. You'll probably always see me drinking it. So it does look like it comes down to a nice, nice curve at the other. Um, his right one has this almost cavity cut out, and I'm not sure if that's just the the look that we have. <clears throat> yeah, no. See, it's got this nice. It's a cut mark, almost like a C, where this one's filled in. So this then will come out. Oh, thanks for the follow. I had a lot of help yesterday um, with my stream. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so we've got alerts set up. And they're cute little animals. Some of them you might even recognize. I am new to streaming. This is my first legit stream. Um, this one will be posted, good or bad, long or short, uh, after I'm done. Some say that they're there for you guys to go back to, but I guarantee I'll go back and watch just to make sure that I drew things out correctly. The game plan is to stream all of the workings of this cosplay from start to finish so I know that watching somebody draw is boring at times I get it I get it um, I however uh, again I'm sticking to this from start to finish oh hey Meredith so we're doing start to finish um, I, I was initially self-taught, but I went to school for 
uh, five, <coughs> five years uh, <laughs> and studied art with some amazing, amazing individuals at a private liberal arts school with Meredith. <laughs> yep, I just called you out. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think I would be the same painter if it wasn't for um, Professor Bob Roger. He uh, was a very, very, very knowledgeable individual. And you never use the word cute. You always use the word whimsical. It's not a cute squirrel. It's a whimsical squirrel with a mustache and a smoking pipe. <laughs> Looking back at my time in college, I probably would have uh, cherished, cherished a little. When it's gone, it's gone. It looks like when I rubbed things over, I missed some things. So where? Interesting. I did make it bigger. Forgot. <clears throat> Oh, also, I will, I'll share a secret with you guys, because <coughs> it's off to the side here, and I can kind of see it. Michigan Renaissance Festival, usually I do really, really, really big, elaborate things, but this year, I'm going to stick with something smaller, maybe? Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw the Seder costume from last year, but I'm going to be doing a headdress this year. And so we are going to go, you can see the cat slightly in the background. We're going to go with a saber tooth tiger skull um, with hanging jawbone so that it kind of cuts along my own natural jawbone line. And then we're going to do some really wild and crazy antelope horns. Uh, I'm going to be sculpting the mask out of monster clay and then doing a press with warbler, the thermoplastic, on top to keep that lightweight. Um, shape because I'm going to put it all on top of a baseball cap. Uh, it's going to be kind of more wasteland-esque. I don't know, it should be really cool. Really cool. So, there. You guys heard it first. That's what's, that's what's on the table. Um, <clears throat> Renfest, good, good question. Um, it would, do you, do a lot of people cosplay at Renfest? A lot of people do whatever they want at Renfest, and that is the best part about Renaissance Festival. So you'll have people that will be dressed up in just your typical, um, loose garb with the flowy skirts, a lot of corsets, a lot of bustling boobs overflowing everywhere. Um, then you'll have people that are just wearing cat ears or a cat tail, a lot of wings. As for, and I'm thinking you're really meaning like balls to the wall cosplay, it, it depends, I guess. Uh, so there's a lot of people that you'll see Star Wars almost altered into a medieval-esque form. Uh, I took a, a World of Warcraft Blood Elf Mage and I took the paladins, the shoulders off of it, and I did a phoenix leather mask on top, and I took that, so I, I did have the horde symbol and everything on it, and that worked out well. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's completely up to you. It's up to you. How much attention do you want to draw to yourself? Everybody, everybody there is welcoming. Um, definitely would say that it's a judgment-free zone. Those are my best places, types of venues, ones that you don't have to worry about. So whatever you want to do, I just know that I was sweating, sweating, oy vey, I was spitzing. 
<laughs> um, so that's why this year uh, I want to I want to keep it light lightweight because it's hot it's really hot Yeah, no, Meredith, we can, you can call me, text me anytime you want. My number hasn't changed since high school. <laughs> so, yeah, we can talk about Twitch. This is my actual, like uh, I, I stated earlier, this is my first, my first, first legit stream. We, I tried yesterday, but uh, thank you to uh, a very generous Twitch creative mod who helped me out. We were having some bit and video rendering issues where things were very, very, very laggy. It also doesn't help that I'm on a laptop in the middle of a city, um, like major city, not helping at all. That and it's the summer and all of the high schoolers are on summer vacation and I'm sure that around noon they're just finally getting up to get online. Um, so, yay, yay streaming qualities. But again, I'm just working on my Final Fantasy XIV um, design plans. Um, for those who didn't hear, I'm doing Gosetsu Overfall, the samurai from Doma of Final Fantasy XIV Online. Uh, I'm waiting for a new drive to come in for the Mac Daddy computer in the non-crafting room uh, before I jump on that. I know, I know, oh, don't shun me with your words or your... Your, your shocking thoughts. I have not started Final Fantasy XIV online. However, I've stalked it, and this gentleman has stolen my heart. I mean, come on. He saves him and his friends from the collapsing castle, only to end up on a, on a deserted island with his BFF. I don't think it gets much worse than that. That and I love the whole kimono style outfits. They're so comfortable to cosplay. Nothing tight. Not that I didn't like Talon, but you don't have to uh, be in bodysuit shape, if you will. And since it is right after Halloween, Yumacon, I do like me my sweets. So we went over his shoulders here are all both attached, which will help because he is a more broad shape than myself. Um, so these will be more of like a shoulder pad to him, to his costume, rather than me actually covering my own shoulder. So I'm imagining them to stick out to about here and come down. Luckily, again, with the kimono that he wears, the kimono fabric and the body and the ornate of the actual sleeves will fill some of that negative spa space that my actual arms don't. At least that's the game plan. Game plan so far. I've got lots and lots of reference images. I don't I keep printing them off. If you're wondering why they're in sleeves, they give off a weird glare. It's because I'm a very, very, very messy individual. Very messy. Um, so if I get paint slung on them or water spilled on them, they'll still be good. Still be good to use. Anyone viewing going to Yumacon this year? It's in Detroit. It's the first weekend in November. It's like an anime convention. I mean, you can really make it what you want. I'm going to be bringing a non-anime cosplay with me as well. Awesome! Smellums, I will have to say, the buddy I took with me to Downriver Comic Con said he was so excited that you you were there as your Halo um, character, and you'll have to forgive me. Uh, I'm not really great with Halo names, but it was like Captain Master Chief. Um, he said he cheered for you instead of me. So, <laughs> but uh, you you made his day. You made his day. Um, I have not gone to SDCC. I uh, it was funny. We were just joking. Uh, 
that if I did ever go to SGCC, I would probably be hysterically crying the whole entire time just of pure excitement and uh, visual overload. <laughs> there's, there's just so much going on. Uh, it's, it's on the bucket list. The things to do before you die. Go to San Diego Comic Con. That would be, that would be really cool. Again, like like that like your hair costume is an understatement. He loved it. <laughs> so congrats. <laughs> if he had social media, I'm sure he would he would follow all of your stuff, but he he's trying to live in the Stone Age. Good friend of mine. Yep. Alright, so I'm moving down to the fingerless gloves and his hand armors. Um, cool thing about actual kimono sleeves is they don't come all the way down to your wrists um, and cover your hands like, I guess, our, our traditional uh, Western American long-sleeved shirt would. They stop because you've got to think they're holding katanas and the last thing you want to do is have the handle of your katana snag in your sleeve. So the fact that these sleeves stop just below his elbow will make it so that um, I won't have a lot of extra fabric underneath my arm that I've got to put those arm armor pieces over. So, yay! I will have to say what I have been noticing drawing out more and more Final Fantasy um, costumes and, and characters is that the armor pieces are are made and laid on characters realistically and I use that loosely because some of the characters I feel like their anatomy and their outfits defy gravity but in in this samurai's case all of his layerings are how somebody would actually um, put them together and layer them together. He's got his under kimono, his over kimono, you know, the obi, which he's using as a green sash. Um, all those details on his actual waist sash will be embroidered. Same thing with the uh, decoration, ornate decoration at the bottom of his his pants too. That will all be hand, hand, I use that loosely, hand embroidered. I'm not, I, I do have a sewing machine that can do embroidery, but I'm not well versed in it, so I guess no time to learn like the present. Um, all right, Meredith, have a great day at work. It was great, uh, great chatting with you for a moment. Miss you. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we will indeed have to catch up soon, very soon, very, very, very soon. All right, back to his hands, I keep jumping around. Um, my hands are small, uh, so I was noticing I was having problems with Talon's ar hand armor. So this will be something that I have to to buckle down and force myself to render correctly. Uh, there's just not a lot of surface area, so the more details that you put on the back of your hand, uh, the harder it is, and I just keep wanting to go bigger with my armor pieces instead of the size that they should be. Detail's hard. Detail's hard when you've got scalding thermoplastic that's slowly eating away your fingertips. I, I refuse to wear gloves. Maybe that's my first problem. Refuse to wear gloves. Oh. I have yet to have a costume with this beautiful purple. I look, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Purple and green combo. I do a lot of red. I just shook the whole entire table when I was erasing with that. Ha! Huh. Right. So what I just erased there is I, I was so excited about doing his bands on his arms that I started doing the bands on his arms and made them to my arm or the more female arm width 
uh, forgetting that I have to do the plate that protects the wrist, um, as well as these bands here, his gloves, I'm actually going to build up so that it won't be my, um, like my own width and size of arm, but it'll be a little bit more bulkier, almost, almost like uh, quilting, quilting, some batting, making it thicker. If anybody lingering um, has questions, and it could be anything not regarding this, if you got questions about other builds that I've done, um, I am open. Again, I know how watching somebody draw can, uh, can be boring. <laughs> can indeed be boring. He's got great texture even on the tops of his gloves. Great texture everywhere. Great texture. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> This will be my first time crossing my fingers that everything works out well here. This will be my first time competing at Yumacon. It's not boring watching somebody draw. Uh, fun fact, before all this, I actually was a high school uh, shop and art teacher. And I would have kids stare at me draw all day long. And when I tried to stare back at them drawing, uh, they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me. Hmm. But Detroit budget cuts, and apparently nobody needs a, uh, a shop teacher these days. So we moved on to costuming. It's pretty cool. I get to stay home and uh, draw things out, hang out with the feline. I'm not sure if you can see him. He's, he's in the little hammock. Oh, he's sleeping. He says, please do not disturb. All right, so let's see if I can do this again. I just drew out his hand. I, honestly, I know I'm going to have to redraw it on the other side. I know that. I do do cosplay commissions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to trace over it. Um, but to get back to your, yes, I do do cosplay commissions. Uh, depending on how big the commission is, like I had a gentleman who took my slot up for Halloween. So he wants a full commissioned costume this Halloween. Unfortunately, then my October month is completely booked up for one individual. So as of right now, i am got commissions booked until the end of November. Uh, my December commissions are open for the beginning of December. Uh, I have commissions, on then, and then I haven't even started actually booking commissions for 2018. People have asked, uh, but there's been nothing set in stone yet. So yeah, you can just throw me a message, an email. Um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see my email address. Uh, just make a subject that uh, I won't get snagged by my spam. Because unfortunately, there's so much stuff that comes in, and if the spam bot catches it, it's gone forever. And for that, I'm sorry. And if that's the case, you can just DM me in every single social media thing or yell at me on here hey I sent you an email how come you have not responded uh, some people don't want costumes some people want paintings of their beloved pets tattoo drawings I can work with you with anything don't matter 
All right, so what I did was I loosely drew out, or traced, because it's tracing paper, the hand that I just did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over, because I honestly want to work smarter, not harder. I am flipping it over, laying out approximately where I want it to go. I am going to take... And again, it's, it's nothing fancy. I think I've had this thing for quite some time now, maybe even since high school. And I'm just going to make sure I'm holding the paper back and forth, or steadily, and move this back and forth over top. And what I'm doing is I'm applying pressure and I'm rubbing the graphite off of the surface of my, my tracing paper and on to the paper below, and voila. So what paper am I using to draw all my stuff on? I use watercolor paper. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit thicker poundage. Um, poundage is like the thickness of paper. Uh, so it, all, it has like a, almost more a grainier texture to it, and it'll grab onto those particles a little easier. So with the hand drawn, it's not in the perfect placement. It doesn't have to be. I'm going to go over all of this with ink. That way I can cut back in with some color. But I just saved time instead of having to redraw the whole entire thing. Uh, do I have artwork of my paintings or drawings? You can check them out on my Instagram. I've got some of my latest French Impressionism paintings up on there. Uh, I'm trying to think. I want to say my website, my actual website, disfusional.com, D-I-S-F-U-S-I-O-N-A-L.com. If you go into the portfolios and go 2D, I believe there are paintings there. And if you go to the college work, those are some older paintings. Um, but, yeah, drawing-wise, there's some some recent split faces, the Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort. It's actually hanging up in my hallway. We liked it that much. So now with his other hand drawn, because again I use that transferring technique. Any goals for my stream? Um, I, don't, I don't plan on streaming full time. Um, but what I do want to do is my goal is to stream and or record every bit of this costume. So Gosetsu over, or Everfall, Final Fantasy XIV for Yumakon, I am going to stream and or record every single piece of his build. I, I would like to be able to put together a little bit more uh, documentaries of the, of the cosplay builds themselves, because you, one can only snap so many pictures. One, one, and I'm sure that people get tired of looking at all of the pictures. Um, and with that said, that's why on Facebook I started taking the portfolios of photos for all of my builds and turning them into more of a magazine or a newsletter type of read. And you can see those on my Facebook for free. Uh, I don't have a Patreon. It's it's there for people to see already. I don't need to make it scandalous. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm an open book. If people want to ask me how to do things, tips, tricks, I have both the cosplay knowledge as well as the classical, more traditional education behind it. Um, other parts of the art. Uh, Ceramics, raku firing, ceramics, we can go painting, watercolors, oil. Photography would be the only area that I cannot be of great assistance. So, as for my goals, to get this costume done in time for Yumicon. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's the goal. Small, small victories. Streaming is just so that I don't get lonely then at home. Because let me tell you, the cat sleeping in the hammock isn't much of a socialite.
I'll have to check her out then. That actually sounds like a good idea. That and if I'm streaming, I can't just sporadically take my break and step away from the desk and forget about it. Keeps me keeps me on topic, on task. So these shoulder things that I'm just finishing up with and drawing the top of his kimono, the back side is pretty darn cool. It comes together in a half circle cape across his back. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the rope with actual rope because actual rope will get pretty heavy. I might do it with uh, some stuffing stuffing like some cotton fabric and then spray doing some airbrush spray painting to get it the color of rope and then just twisting it that way I don't know yet options watch creative streams when cosplaying well that makes sense that definitely makes sense I know that the radio today has the same songs on repeat. I tend to be a uh, Game of Thrones on tape listener. There's just something about that gentleman's voice and all those characters that he reads. It also keeps me caught up. Because with costuming, I have little time for reading. Little time for reading. So it looks like his under kimono has the same same design, same pattern. Oh, it doesn't. It's just got the same colors. So his under kimono is green, and it's the same forest green as his sash around his waist. However, it doesn't look like it's the same embroidered stitch. Since it's just the collar that you can see on it, when I go to craft this, I'm only going to embroider the actual collar itself going down in both directions. So there'll still be a lot of embroider that's not seen that'll be there, but I'm not going to embroider the whole entire under kimono shirt. That would be ridiculous and I don't hate myself that much. So, we're going to have, uh, he's got this nice low V going on so that we can see his pectoral muscles. Um, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go for it, Gosetsu. We'll, 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 we'll do it up. We'll do it up. The samurai says... It's there, or a lack of fabric is there. We'll run with it. I'm not doing facial hair, okay? I'm not going to be putting on his wig, or not, sorry, his wig. I will be wearing the gray wig. I won't be doing the full-on beard. Um, so this is a, a gender bend. I'm going to take the liberty to next the facial hair. However, I will have the actual wig and then the Japanese style uh, ponytail tied up in the back. And the tie is going to be made out of the same green that I'm taking from the under kimono and from the sash um, so that it all ties in. Because he will also have his big old hat on. I'm sure you guys saw in the Stormblood uh, trailer release the the gentleman at the top the samurai at the top with the big uh, big hat that was him so his hat which is right there his big old hat 
uh, that will be made for it. So I'm, I'm excited about that. There's a lot of balls around his waist, as awkward as that sounds. Lots of balls. You can see white fabric between the black over kimono and his waist balls and sash he's got his brocade pin again on the side So I don't draw my uh, sketches out in the center of the page. Here's the reason why. Uh, I like to draw all of the details larger to kind of see what it is that's going on. And I will say, he's got a lot more tassels than one would have initially realized. <laughs> to get this purple cord the coloration that I would like, I'm probably going to have to buy and dye using Ritz dye more to really get it that that rich bright royal purple color that he has so just to finish off talking about we will Oh, the large rope that goes around his neck. Die. Alright, first thing I gotta do then is the rope. So, attaching his shoulder pieces together is a that same purple cord that we were just talking about. It looks like it ties. Yeah, it looks like it just ties together in a large knot in the center, hangs down into two purple tassels. No mm, tassels. Can't have enough of them. Alright. 
not the big doozy. So there's this big rope that goes around his neck. I'd say that it would drop down around just above the belly button. Do a I'm doing circles to kind of get the idea of where that rope's going to lay. Because it does want to go broader. Okay. Yep. We'll do it that way. So unfortunately, I won't be showing this rope going around the back of his neck. It drops down behind him. So when I end up sketching out his back view, you'll see that it's dropped down behind him and into two very loose knots. So there's going to have to be clips or something or magnets that this hooks onto to keep it in place and to stop it from wanting to unravel and try. I'm going to probably have to glue or stitch these together. The goal is to make sure that everything is clean. So every single, every single stitch that I do, you've got to make sure, is this a stitch that can be seen? Is this a stitch that I can hide? Um, if the stitch is seen, does it look out of place? Does it look like it's part of the aesthetics of the rope, if I'm using rope? Which, if I'm going to have to glue it, rope would be a wiser choice. I wonder if I can twist my own. Because it's thicker, I'm drawing it coming out in an arc. The thicker it is, the harder it's going to be to bend, and the wider bends it'll make. Do to do. I'm dropping down. Because I gave my starting points and my belly button, I knew where my circle was going to go. Yeah, it drops down behind. Perspective makes things look weird, so if when you are drawing your own sketches out and you realize things just don't look right, don't give yourself a hard time. Uh, the human body perspective and how things drop behind shoulders and everything, it's, it's different. It, it, it is indeed different. It doesn't mean that what you've drawn is wrong. You might just not, um, your eyes just might not be tuned to that change in perspective. It happens. Don't worry about it. So looks like I've got a large horseshoe around my neck. And what would a large horseshoe be without three more tassels? Yep, more tassels. More tassels. This will be the first costume that I uh, actually use an airbrush to weather the fabric with. A lot of times I do a hand painting or hand dyeing. Uh, with this one, I'm going to use an airbrush with the fabric dyes. Yeah, should go well. With what the ideas I have should go well. I'm putting off drawing the katana, but it looks like that's the last. I just briefly drew the scars that he has across his face. I'm rather excited about that. So next, next is his katana. 
I feel like he should have two swords, um, because usually with the katana comes the smaller blade as well, but uh, he doesn't seem to have one, this, this NPC. Um, so his katana comes down over here. He's got a square. something so we can see it. Now remember, katana blade ranges change. There are because I don't want to say that no two are the same, because that's that's a lie. Your your range of katana can change because it's based off of your arm span. So like my katana blade would be significantly smaller than say somebody who was six feet tall. Because they've got a larger wrist span to pull the sword blade out of its sheath. I mean, there is a range to, to stay within, but it's so cool. So cool. And again, he's got a tassel on the end of his katana handle, his hilt. Why not? Why not? If you can put a tassel there, why not do it? Okay. Another tassel. Why not? All right. And then a ruler around here somewhere. Looking for a different view. So yeah, it does have an end cap to it. It's got the diamond pattern. There we go. It's got these circles that on the end. that gets stuck through part of his sash. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just like with the brooch where I enlarged it here so I could see it better, I'm going to do that with the pieces that I might not be able to see that well. Uh, so the first one is going to be the belt because it's just a bunch of circles and why not do something easy? So along this area here where there's a blank spot, all I'm going to do is just do circles.
Hmm. Trying to, to ponder what to, to close up next. Well, let's go for the shoulders. Blah. I had so much fun drawing them up the first time. Just kidding. So what I just did was I marked at the top of my page the right and the left because when you're drawing your right and your left are flipped. different references just to make sure because this one is a bigger scale it's more important for me that this one is not just a guess but as close as I can get it because this shape here will be what I use later when I go to cut my actual pattern out. Oh, that looks a lot better already. A lot more clearly defined. It looks like So I'm still not sure if I'm going to do these uh, shoulder pieces because um, you can see here how there is some flex to them, some give. If I'm going to do them out of leather or if I'm going to wrap a warbler. Um, as of right now, I'm leaning toward the leather working side. Um, yeah. Yeah. So far, so far. That, or just making it out of fabric and then again using that batting to add the thickness for it so that it looks like a heavy draping of leather that's, that's over oneself. Still in the designing and planning stages, so if you have your own ideas, feel free to share them. And yes, I will figure out what that symbol is up there, because I did just half-ass it. Oops. Not everything's perfect yet. Not everything's perfect. So there's the right. Here, we'll do the left. 
I could try to keep things the same distance or This is no good to me. So in my sketches here, I'm rounding out both corners, um, almost like rounding them out and down. I know that this in the back is going to hang down further than what's in the front, so it just makes sense to show that there is more eventually to be drawn at the bottom, to be sculpted at the bottom, and to leave it open than to close it off like you see here, where it's just chopped. Which means I should do the same then to my image. Yeah, okay. Good find, good find. All right, so we want it to go in a little. It too has flames. Huh. What are the edges? The back is symmetrical, but the front is not, and that's driving me a little bit crazy. <laughs> ah, I thought it was more even than it's proving to be, because it looks like he even has a point that sticks out some. Yes, he does. So it looks like here, this comes up and sticks out before it goes in. Oh, that's... Ooh. Okay, this is where the rope comes from, the rope comes from down here, gold trim, stops as we get more gold filigree up here. He's a discreetly snazzy dresser. Thing. These shoulder pieces, this is going to be fantastic and time consuming because what you don't see is that there are a bunch of lines This will be made out of foam and warble and I'll have to adhere it because that's just crazy Crazy cool. <laughs> now 
now the shoulders are out of the way. Time to do the secondary pieces of armor that hang down from his shoulders. They look really cool in this reference image here. They do look different. Oh, I'm yawning. In the in-game model, but that might just be the way he's... I don't know. I just don't know. Anywho. I'm just doing a side view of these uh, shoulders here. I'm doing the second tier, but I'm doing it a little bit more based off the in-game model. Yeah. Yes, I am. In-game model. will be sculpted outward a little bit just like how it shows in the in-game model it shows multi layer so I can see that this here is one layer as well as what's underneath and that's what kind of confuses me is that this here in this image looks like it could both be his under kimono or part of his shoulders here, it's no doubt that this is just part of his shoulders. Here, this is no doubt that it's the armor is not part of his shoulders. So it's... Here, it looks like it could be wrapped around. Ah! Just don't know. Caused by problems. I'm going to make them a separate and attach it to the armor. That way, when it hangs down off the already extended points, it will fill in some of the space that my own build can't fill. My hair is everywhere. Lots of embroidery stitching is going to happen with this costume by the looks of it. Lots of embroidery stitching. doing here is I'm drawing and shading in what would be the underside of this to show that it is three spikes all the way around. I'm going to do a 
flat straight on version or view of his gloves. So uh, the top part of his gloves and then the, the arm part of his gloves. Right little kitty? Little kit and here's his tail. Usually he's driving me crazy. And the fact that he's just sitting there so calmly, I almost feel like I need to drive him crazy. So I'm going to, for his arms, do plating, or his hands do plating. So his hand, um, I had mentioned earlier in the stream that I have a hard time when it comes to crafting a hand that is not too big for my own. So I'm going to do plates, which will mean that the top of my hand will be in two sections. So hopefully they will be able to slide over each other, um, almost like a, like a centipede, if you will. Or they'll be overlapping with, I don't know, armadillo. Uh, um, articulated, that's what I'm going with to help add with the if the pieces are too big for my own size hand. The arm will take up the rest of this empty space here. So the katana and the sash in the bottom hat trim of the pants will all be on a separate piece, which will be the back side. Um, I always start a cosplay by drawing it. I have, I have books filled. Um, I always, I, I was looking for my portfolio, but it's actually on the other table. Um, I, I, I do them all this big scale on watercolor. I will draw them all out and I will draw all of their pieces. Uh, this is just a visual aid to assist me with really diving into the project. If, when I start crafting, if I don't have to worry about all the extra details and what's going to sit on top of what, I'm figuring that all out right now as I, as I work and I, I sketch this out. I'm also figuring out too where the fabric pieces are. So, you know, I'm noticing that the black fabric that I'm going to be using for his pants, I can use for his kimono. However, I will need to get a rope that I can dye that is of um, two different sizes, purple, one that I can wrap cord around the wrists and um, different, like his, uh, his katana's got the same size, but it's a smaller rope than what's connecting his shoulders in the front together. So I'm, I'm figuring out all these little, little tidbits and attention to details while I'm sketching and drawing it all out. That way I won't have to go back later to make sure that I've hit everything. OCD? Very much so, probably. Probably. I know with his hands, um, these are going to be symmetrical objects, yay! Um, so whatever I do on one side of the hand will be mimicked over to the other side. Yes. So like, here's one side, that's the same side, and they don't change. They don't. They're the same. So. black rivets to attach them together um, in the back actually that's the front and 
and I'll end up using elastic that way if if for some reason it needs to outstretch the plates um, like my hand motion does that elastic will give without hurting my my armor pieces the top of the hands, kind of drawn circles where I already think the rivets to hold the elastic should go. Um, there'll be some back here as well because in the picture he's got that great purple twine again holding it to the inside of his palm. Now his armor for the tops of his, his uh, wrists and arms, they actually go underneath his hand pieces. I'm going to draw them above the hand pieces for now just so that I can see what you know the bottom that's tucked away even looks like. Some people can create their, their cosplays without having to do these, these drawing sketches beforehand and more power to them. I, uh, I know for a fact that I would not be, be able to do such, even if it was a week cast or like a, a week long build, I would need, I would need to do these sketches. I really would. And I have. Appa was a quick build, and Appa got a, a sketch done as well for it.
I'm just doing that transferring technique again. So I've sketched it uh, on the tracing paper. I'm going to flip it over onto this paper. Kind of get it where I want it. At least make sure things are kind of even. Take the back side. And just rub it again. Do, 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 do. Let's do there now. And then I can just draw back over top of it. When you do it that way, it's not exact. It's just there to help guide you in making something symmetrical. Now, it does show that his armor have almost these ridges in them. So it looks like one is here. up, goes over, okay, so I think that goes, I see, he's got panels to the tops of his armor pieces, He's got the same to his hands as well. detail. I don't want to forget anything. All right, so that took care of his, uh, his front, the gender bending front. Next thing to do would be to do the back. And, slyly enough, behind me, I have a female booty drawn out already. <laughs> um, for now, though, this stream is going to be coming to an end. I would like to say thank you to everyone who stopped by and hung out for a little bit. I greatly appreciate it. For all those that, that chatted with us, uh, thank you kindly. It was, it was wonderful talking with you. I hope you guys stop by uh, at another time. Next stream we do will be tomorrow. Uh, we're going to try to do it around noon again. Noon seemed like a good time. Uh, we are then going to work on the backside of Gosetsu. So we've got the front all sketched up and ready to go. We're going to work on the back, so we're going to finish those shoulders and get that cape going around the back. And we're going to draw out a larger sketch of the katana, that way we can see both sides of the katana. Uh, yes, I'm really excited. The sash around his waist, 
will be in more and high detail as well tomorrow too. So again, thank you very much. If you want to see more of my artwork, you can follow me on any of the social media icons. They're listed below. If you are interested in commissions or if you want to do a collab at one of the upcoming conventions, you can contact me on my email, which is just at gmail.com. Uh, until, until next time, bye.